Barack Rosenshine was a professor in the Department of Educational Psychology at the University of Illinois. This quote by Rosenshine might seem like an obvious way to teach, but it has a long history in education. This teaching model of guided practice was developed by an American educator, Siegfried Engelmann, in 1960s. His theory is that clear instruction should eliminate misconceptions and will or could lead to more effective and efficient learning. It is also referred to as direct instruction. Welcome back to our microlearning series called How Learning Happens, based on the book How Learning Happens, Seminal Works in Educational Psychology, by Paul Kirshner and Carl Hendrick. My name is Nidhi Sachteva, and I'm the creator and narrator of this microlearning series. In this micro lesson, we will take a deeper dive to understand the teaching model of direct instruction, and we will look at 10 research-based principles of instruction developed by Rosenshine, and what these principles mean for our classroom practice. Let's get started. Direct instruction, or DI, is an evidence-based teaching model. It's teacher-led, it's scripted, it's carefully planned lessons that are presented in small increments. In direct instruction, instructors emphasize academic goals, ensure that learners are involved in learning, select the learning objectives and monitor learner progress, structure the learning activities and give immediate academically focused feedback, and create a task-oriented yet relaxed learning environment. In 2012, Barack Rosenshine published an article in American Educator magazine about instructional principles that have proven their value time and again. In that article, he extracted principles from research in cognitive science, research on master teachers, and research on cognitive supports for learning. The major strength of this synthesis is, even though these are three very different bodies of research, there is no conflict whatsoever between the instructional suggestions that they provide. Let us now look at these 10 golden instructional principles by Rosenshine. By beginning each session with a short review, we refresh our memory and activate our prior knowledge. In our previous micro lesson, we discussed this connection between prior knowledge and new learning in detail. Remember, what we know determines what we learn. Reviewing what you've learned reinforces learning and retention by establishing connections between prior knowledge and new incoming knowledge. Rosenshine's second principle strongly aligns with cognitive theories of learning especially John Sweller's Cognitive Load Theory. In our previous micro lesson on cognitive load and problem solving, we learned that the cognitive limit of our working memory is extremely small, and too much information or heavy cognitive load can overwhelm our working memory. In such a scenario, our working memory can no longer process the new incoming information, thereby impeding any new learning from happening. Therefore, always offer small amounts of information, then help students practice it, and only go to the next step if the previous one is mastered. The third principle can be seen as an extension of the first principle. Answering questions helps students to practice what has been just presented, that is, new information. Asking questions can also help identify any gaps in learning where further instruction might be needed. It is also useful to ask students to explain how they came to the answer. All these strategies help build strong connections between prior knowledge and new information, thereby leading to knowledge retention. According to the fourth principle, students need what Rosenstein calls cognitive support to learn how to carry out tasks and solve problems. By acting as a model and also telling them what you're thinking, what you're doing, what working steps you're taking, and why you're doing what you're doing, you can show them how to do it properly. 
Rosenshine's fifth principle of guided instruction is extremely relevant to our teaching practice. This principle states that it is not simply enough to present students with the new material because it can be easily forgotten unless there is sufficient rehearsal. Information processing research suggests that students need to spend additional time rephrasing, elaborating, and summarizing new material in order to store this material in their long-term memory. A teacher can guide or facilitate this rehearsal by asking relevant questions. Studies indicate that guided practice can lead to higher levels of engagement among students. Research behind the sixth principle suggests that effective teachers frequently checked to see if all the students were learning the new material. The teachers focused not only on the final product, but also on the process of learning. These checks can also red flag if students were developing any misconceptions about the newly learned material. Experiencing success is an important part of learning. Success breeds self-efficacy, a feeling of achievement, and ultimately the motivation to continue. Effective teachers frequently check whether their students are achieving success with the new material. If the practice doesn't lead to success, chances are that the student is practicing the wrong thing, and ingrained errors as well as misconceptions are very difficult to eradicate. Sometimes, students may require additional instructional support or scaffolds while performing difficult tasks. A scaffold is a temporary support used to assist a learner. Scaffolds include modeling the steps by teacher or tools such as cue cards, number line, addition table, or multiplication table. These scaffolds are gradually withdrawn as students become more competent and confident with the material. Providing scaffolds is a form of guided practice. Teachers can't endlessly take students by the hand. In the end, the students have to be able to do it themselves. Let them practice independently and check whether they can really do it or whether more or different guided or unguided practice might be needed. By reviewing something that has already been learned often, the connections in the schemata are strengthened and they become richer, more extensive and automatic. When information can be recalled automatically, it doesn't take up any space in our working memory. The students can then devote more of their attention to comprehension and application. According to Kirshner and Hendrick, direct instruction has a positive effect on learning, instructors and parents are positive about it, and it doesn't hurt learner attitudes, confidence, self-esteem, and behavior. There is also strong evidence available that students who received direct instruction have significantly higher academic achievement. They also had higher self-esteem and self-confidence than students whose instruction followed any other program. Therefore, Rosenshine's principles provide a very useful framework for effective learning and teaching.